Virginia Penitentiary. This gothic monument of pain and suffering was ranked by the Department of Justice as one of the most violent prisons in America. There was only one rule, kill or be killed. Oh. Tonight, two paranormal investigative teams will use their cutting edge tactics in an epic challenge to see who can capture the best paranormal evidence. Oh. Who's that? Something just touched my hand. Thank you. This is Paranormal Challenge, West Virginia Penitentiary. Oh, wow. Come on, get down. 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 Get Guys here at West Virginia Penitentiary got burned alive, decapitated. This is going to be the place to be frightened. Zach Vegas, the Paranormal Challenge chairman, is also lead investigator and co-founder of the highly respected and award-winning Ghost Adventures crew. He's completed hundreds of investigations, working with the world's most renowned paranormal researchers and scientists. We've got two guys on each team, one girl on each team. They're very symmetrical. I thought this would be a great matchup for these two teams to compete in one of the most insanely violent prisons of all time. Northeastern Spirit Society, based in Fairmont, West Virginia. I think all three of us have different personalities. My name is Daniel Blay, and I'm the lead investigator. Daniel talks too much. When I'm trying to be quiet, he just keeps talking. My name is Mandy, and I am the second investigator on our team. Mandy brings a lot of knowledge. She's very good with history behind locations. Greg Copperhead Graham. I'm the tech specialist and investigator. Copperhead's very unpredictable. I can think he's right behind me, and then I turn around, and he's 100 yards in front of me. I think the other team, they seem like nice people, but we're just going to here to destroy them. West Virginia Paranormal, based in Morgantown, West Virginia. My style of investigation is a little more uh, straightforward and in your face. My name is Jonathan Johnson. I'm the co-founder and lead investigator. I like to provoke, uh, try to get a response from the spirits, especially in a negative place like this. My name is Jordan Murphy, and I am the second investigator, and I'm the case manager of the group. Jordan is the newest member. We love having her around. She keeps things light. She likes to have a good time. My name is Rich. I'm co-founder of the group and also the tech manager. I am also a photographer, so I see things that a lot of people don't always see. I've always wanted to investigate here. It's one of the most famous places as far as paranormal investigation. We're the complete package, and we will win this competition. West Virginia Paranormal. What's up? Hi. Jordan, how you doing, guys? Northeastern Spirit Society, how you doing? How you doing? Greg, I heard you got a nickname named Copperhead. Yep. <laughs> and I'll tell you oh, something. Wow. Here's a little hint before you get in there, all right? Mm -hmm. If you feel a turtle head poking out, you may want to second think, you know, getting rid of that because some guy lost his head in here during that little moment. So <laughs> just a little tip before I introduce you to Tom here. You guys are getting ready to go head to head in this place, the old West Virginia Penitentiary. You guys pumped up? We're ready. Yeah, definitely. This is Tom Stiles. West Virginia Penitentiary historian Tom Stiles will take the teams on a walkthrough of the location. The information gathered here will serve as a guide for both teams that they will later be judged on during their investigations. But pay attention very closely to all of the history that he tells you. That's a tip. For over a century, the ominous stone walls of West Virginia Penitentiary incarcerated the most twisted and deranged convicts in West Virginia history. Built atop Indian burial mounds in 1876, this castle of horrors drew cheering crowds during its public executions. Out of control inmates constantly rioted. Rogue prisoners raped and murdered each other indiscriminately. Today, West Virginia Penitentiary's abandoned halls are still stained by the blood and tears of the savage souls who were killed here. This was an indoor recreational area for the inmates. It was not closely supervised. There was a lot of violent, violent things that happened in this area. A lot of fights and stabbings, things like that. A lot of homosexuality took place in the Sugar Shack, hence the name the Sugar Shack. 
This was an area of the prison that inmates could take out their vengeance on other inmates. And that's exactly what happened in this area. Back in 1986, on New Year's Day, there was a riot here at this prison. Mr. Littell here was one of the 16 hostages that they'd taken during that riot. They took 16 staff members hostage, which was most of the staff, totally in their hands. Very scary. Didn't know what was going to happen. The inmates brutally murdered three of their own inmates. Kent Sly was a convicted child molester. The inmates called him a baby raper. They took his body after killing it and drug it up and down the cell block, letting the other inmates kick it, spit on it. That body was later found over here in the shower. There was a young man in this cell right here who was considered to be a snitch. And one evening, two members of the Aryan Brotherhood come up here and threw a Molotov cocktail in on this gentleman. You can see the size of the cell. Nowhere to run. And he burned and died in this cell while on fire. I still remember the screams and, and, and the burning odor that I can still hear. <laughs> still hear. The area we're in now is part of the medical department of the prison. This was for the inmate who could be determined as criminally insane. There were several incidents up here where inmates would mutilate themselves. There was one instance of an inmate who loved to write, and he asked the nurse if he could have a pad and a pencil. And as soon as he got the pencil, he gouged both of his eyes up. In the two little cubicle cells back here, and those cells were for the inmate that they can no longer control at all. Inside that cubicle, there's a shower head at the top and a drain at the bottom. That inmate that they put back there found a way to maneuver that drain off of the floor. He squatted over the drain and drug his scrotum around that drain trying to castrate himself. That's the mentality of the inmate that was in this area. There was an inmate who was assigned to work into this area. He was considered to be the warden's chief snitch. His name was R.D. Wall. And one evening, two inmates came down in here to the boiler room to pay R.D. Wall a visit. They grabbed him and stabbed him repeatedly, mutilating his body. They almost severed his head. They cut off part of his fingers, cut off pieces of flesh from his arms, but it was a statement that the inmates were making to the other inmates. The four cells on this upper end were classified for the four worst of the troublemakers. The inmate in this second cell, his name was Rusty Lassiter. One evening up here, they unlocked these four cells to let these men out for recreation. And Rusty came leaping out of his cell, running across past the officer, ran into the end cell, and stabbed Red Snyder 37 times and killed him in his own cell. He dropped his shank, raised his hands as the blood came running out of the cell onto the floor. Teams, you've seen the prison. You've seen the areas. You've seen the violent. You've heard the stories of the violent acts and things that went on here at this prison. Good luck with your investigation. With the competition set to begin, Zach gets each team geared up with the most advanced paranormal detection equipment for tonight's challenge. Teams, how you doing? Good. Good. How was your walkthrough? Good. Who's a little bit creeped out about certain places here? I'll join you in on that, but I'm asking you, all of you, even the big tough guys over here. Are we gonna be seeing you screaming later, maybe? I doubt that I'll scream. No, you don't? <laughs> See about that. Teams on the table in front of me are the same exact pieces of equipment each of you are going to be outfitted with. Two night vision camcorders. One will go on a tripod and not leave the tripod. One thermal imaging camera. Two full spectrum cameras. One is a still, one is a camcorder. You also get two digital recorders. You also get a millimeter that measures for electromagnetic energy and temperature. Let's not waste any time. Suit up. Wait for the signal. And remember, we'll be watching you guys. Good luck. Teams will conduct their investigations simultaneously. West Virginia Paranormal will begin in Zone 1, which is New Wall, the Psych Ward, and the Sugar Shack. And Northeastern Spirit Society will start out in Zone 2, 
which is North Hall, the infirmary, and the boiler room. Strict time constraints are designed to push each team to the limit. They will only be given two hours to complete part one of the investigation, then switch locations and continue investigating for two more hours in part two. Teams will be judged on overall teamwork, technological proficiency, historical knowledge, and audio and visual evidence they are ultimately able to capture. Tonight's judges are three of the country's most notable paranormal experts. Well, we've got both teams set out ready to investigate. Dave Schrader, acclaimed paranormal conference lecturer, co-author of The Other Side, A Teen's Guide to Ghost Hunting, and host of the wildly popular internet talk show, Darkness Radio. They should spread out a little bit more. Joshua P. Warren, author of many paranormal books, most notably How to Hunt Ghosts, radio host of Speaking Strange, and internationally recognized expert on paranormal research. She's more empathetic. And Alexandra Holzer, daughter of famed paranormal investigator Hans Holzer, author of Growing Up Haunted and syndicated columnist for OM Times. All right, we're just getting ready to start Paranormal Challenge West Virginia Penitentiary. And this week's judges, I've brought in Joshua Warren. You are going to be monitoring West Virginia Paranormal, who's going to be starting in Zone 1. And over here, Alexandra Holzer, you are going to be monitoring Northeastern Spirit Society in Zone 2. West Virginia Paranormal, are you guys ready to go? Yes. Ready to go. Northeastern Spirit Society, are you guys ready? Yes, yeah. we're ready. The portals are open. Let the challenge begin. Yeah, they're just getting that quick base reading on the EMF here, the mel meter. Joshua, why is it important, do you think, for them to begin by taking baseline readings? Well, to know what is paranormal, you must first know what is normal. So if there's a sudden change, an anomalous activity, they can start looking for patterns and we'll understand what's happening in this environment. Ken Sly, you here? We hear they call you the baby raper. What was that? Something just touched my hand. Whoa. Yes. Whoa. Dave, what's going on? Well, we've got both teams set out ready to investigate. Each team, again, has been equipped with five different pieces of equipment. Now, throughout the entire building, we have robotic cameras that are set up. We also have one of our cameramen and one of our audio technicians that follow each one of the paranormal teams. We're going to cover every aspect of this investigation. Audio up, West Virginia Paranormal. We're the new wardens in this prison. You answer to us. We're not leaving until, until you communicate with us. Is she chewing gum? One thing that you do when you investigate the paranormal is you do not want to chew gum. That can cause a lot of contamination for your EVP sessions. You're not used to having females in here, are you? And we're not talking about Rich. <laughs> we're talking about me. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. Right at this door. Are you moving? Are you trying to hide? Couldn't get a real girl? Had to rape little girls? Doesn't seem like much of a man to me. I just got a really cold chill down my whole body. I'm doing a cell check. Top floor, who's up here? Sound off. Everyone in where you're supposed to be? We want to see you guys. You in here with me? It had a vibe to it, and then I started coming in here and checking out all this stuff. Look at all that graffiti on the wall. And then over there on the left, it looks like a hole in the wall. Why is there a hole in the wall, Dave? I think that's the way that prisoners would communicate when they were lonely. Oh. Mm -hmm. Communicate. Yeah, they would kind of share their glory with one another. <laughs> Copperhead, please do not use that trigger object. <laughs> I just heard footsteps down here, Daniel. Is that you down there? I just felt something brush my back, brush the back of my neck. Are you here? Are you, did you just touch the back of her neck? Someone around here right now? Kent Sly, you here? Your own inmates killed you. Are you in here? Are you in the shower? Are you trying to find places to hide from us? Because you're not going to hide. We're not scared of you. Come on. Make a noise. Bang on something. 
Whoa. Did you hear that? Yeah. Did you hear those footsteps? That's, that's what I heard earlier. Exactly that was what definite. I heard. Did you hear that, though? That was definite. Someone, someone out there? Team West Virginia says they keep hearing footsteps around them, but they keep talking, and they should be quiet and record. Footsteps. All right, hold on one second, Joshua. Audio up, please, Northeastern. Interesting. Apparently, we're hearing footsteps. Both Daniel teams are both hearing footsteps at the, at the same time while their teams are being stationary in two totally different ends of the Walk building. towards us. Daniel? Yeah? I just heard the sound again right here. Same area? Yeah. Did you hear that from right over there? Yeah. Is that you over there? Come a little bit closer to us. I keep hearing it from the... from upstairs. Daniel, uh, he's a cute-looking young man. He might not be a bad trigger object and bait to use in this prison <laughs> as well. Did you just call him cute? Don't judge my love. <laughs> Are you following us? Or are you running away? If this is your cell, why don't you let us know? We heard your footsteps up here earlier. Like you were looking down at us and laughing at us. We couldn't find you. I can't either. I want to make the, the solo run in the sugar shack now. You're going to? Yeah. Okay. Where are we going to? The, the steps to get to the psych ward. This way. Oh, no. Teams, you got 30 minutes left. 30 minutes left. Sugar Shack. Heard there's a bad cast of characters who used to hang out down here. You one of them? Give me something to be scared of. I'm in charge now. You answer to me. Now, was that a whisper as he was just talking? Did you hear a whisper come I heard over a his cough. voice? I heard a cough and then I heard... Mark that possible missed opportunity. And I'm telling you, I'm taking away your time down here. No more privileges. Boy, we just got huge cold chills. Is that you? Are you trying to send me a message? What was that? What the f was that? It sucks that we can't find the psych ward. Jordan and Rich still have not found the psych ward. They still haven't. Give me a sign of your presence. You want to be nice? You want to ask you, pretty please? Pretty please show me something? You want to scare me? You got to do something big. I mean big. I just saw a shadow move over here. That's what I like to see. Come out and play. Oh, what the? Did you? Is that Jonathan coming back? Jonathan, is that you? Hey, do you remember how to get to the psych ward? Try and think real quick. Psych ward, where's that? It's time to end round one of Paranormal Challenge, West Virginia. Penitentiary. That's it. I'm pissed that we couldn't find a side board. Yeah, I feel like it's gonna hurt us. Teams, how you doing? Good. Really good. How was round one? Good. Great. Real good. I want to introduce you to my chief judge, Dave Schrader. I got to bring one thing up, Jordan. Mm -hmm. You got to get rid of the gum. All right. Because if we can hear it as the judges and the smacking of your lips, it's going to taint your EVPs, okay? As the judges, we've enjoyed watching the investigation. I would like to see the energy level come up on both sides a little bit. There's something that we want to show each of you that might help you out and aid you in, in possibly getting your own evidence in these exact areas. In Northeastern Spirit Society, you're headed to Zone 1. Uh, there is the psych ward. Right now, I want to bring in Billy Tolley, who's our Paranormal Challenge audio-visual tech, to play you an EVP that was captured there. Hey, guys. Hi. You just come out of a jail cell? Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> okay. Let's play the EVP. 
You can hear it say, get back here. West Virginia Paranormal, you are headed to zone two. I don't know if you're gonna to wanna to go in there by yourself when you see this visual piece of evidence. You can see like a figure and it just vanishes into thin air. You still wanna go down there by yourself, Jordan? No. <laughs> In addition to the evidence Zach has presented, they're each given trigger objects associated with the deceased to attract more spirit energy. For Northeastern Spirit Society, a lawnmower blade. And for West Virginia Paranormal, two homemade knives called shanks. Inmates use these objects during violent prison outbursts. Teams, are you ready for round two? Yes. yes. Are you ready for round two? Yes. Uh, come on. Let's do it. It's about to heat up in here. Right. Let's go. All right, wait for the signal. Teams will now switch locations and will continue investigating for two more hours. Northeastern Spirit Society will work Zone 1, while West Virginia Paranormal will explore Zone 2. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to put this down in the floor. When I get to the first letter of your name, touch that silver stick for me. A. B. C, H, J, L, M, M. Okay, thank you. That's the first letter of your name. Awesome. I like the teamwork involved. I really like the use of technology here. I haven't seen it used as kind of an Ouija board. I want to do the second letter of your name. A, E, I, O, M, O, M, O, okay, thank you. I'm ready for you. I'm a girl, and you're a big, tough criminal. Well, show me that you're a tough criminal. Yeah, I just saw a shadow down Did you? I swear to God. That thing is going nuts right now. It walked right across that doorway right there. Where, where, where? They're just down there at the end of the thing. Whoa, whoa, Did you whoa. See it? Yes, whoa. It's moving. I saw it block out the like three times. Whoa. All right, whoever's down there at the end of the hall, we got a shank. We're coming for you. So Let's do this. Let's battle. You're, you're ready to ride? fight. You want to take the guards hostage? You come take me hostage. Let's go. Touch me. Pull my hair. Touch my ass, I don't care, do something, let's go. Are you in here? All right, right now we've got Rich, who is going by himself in the boiler room. An inmate was on a toilet going to the bathroom when he was viciously murdered and decapitated. R.D. Wall. I'm here to see you. I hear you're the big snitch around these parts. It's just me down here. This equipment looks like you've been slacking off a little bit. I'm just gonna sit here. I've got all night. Lead me to where you are. Lead me to what room is yours. Will you do that? God, look at me shake. Look at the temperature. Something just touched my hand. Look at that! Oh my God. West Virginia Paranormal is over uh, at the North Hall. And the North Hall has some really decrepit, violent history. Rusty came leaping out of his cell and stabbed Red Slayer 37 times and killed him in his own cell. You in there, Red? I'm coming for you. You ready? Is this what you did? Did you run down here? Did you stab him and walk out? Is that what you did? Yeah, they, they should do more of that. A little, little, little more effeminately, I think, than it actually took place. <laughs> Is this what you did? <laughs> but at least they're, they're trying to engage. All right, who was lighting this millimeter up? 
that you? There you go. You like Jordan in the cell alone? This thing is going crazy. Look at that thing. I know. Every That's time wrong. we say something about down there, look at it. You trying to lead us down there? Yeah? I mean, that thing is just pegging out. I'm going to move these away from it. That's unreal. Just step out of there for a second. Look at that. Oh, my God. Step back in there. Hello again. Oh, yay! <laughs> Give me everything you have. Look at that. <laughs> this is just <laughs> crazy. This is crazy. All right, Jonathan's coming in. This is where you were standing, right? It doesn't like you. Not a peep. I'm standing in the exact same spot as Jordan when this thing was going crazy, nothing. See, look, that's just going to show you. Look how close he's standing to it. Look at that. It won't even go off. So just to address all of you skeptics out there that may think that her just entering the cell is triggering the millimeter to alarm like that, um, I'm standing with it right now, and you have to be this close to the antenna to even get just that first light to illuminate. Look it. That's one light, and I'm almost touching it. This is where the child molester was dragged through here. They took his body after killing it and drug it up and down the cell block, letting the other inmates kick it, spit on it. There's something in there that is warmer, and it is moving. Look at that. You see where she's, her hand just is just right below her hand. Mm-hmm. Come out here for a second and hold this. Okay. And I'm gonna go in there and see if we can figure out what this is. Okay. All right, I'm back in here. Uh, there was a footstep right behind me. There looked to be two of them. Two? Mm-hmm. Lovely, there was just one a second ago. All right, you see my hand? What happened? Mm, something just touched my hand. Uh -huh. All right, you're in uh -huh. here. There are three of them now. Back in 1986, on New Year's Day, there was a riot here at this prison. The inmates brutally murdered three of the room inmates. One of them was right below your hand. Right here? Yeah, yeah, right there. I do not like it in here at all. Boy, it got heavy in here. Like, bad heavy. Take your jacket off. No! <laughs> Seriously. Okay. Let me put it back on. I think something's following her home tonight. It isn't Jonathan or Rich. All right, here's Rich. Nothing like sitting on another man's throne. 260 pound guy walks right in there, standing, sitting inches from this device. On a metal toilet. On a metal toilet. It's not even triggering. Not even one light is indicating anything. That is impressive. Unbelievable. Unfreaking believable. You're not the child molester. Whoa, maybe so. If you remember in the first hour, both teams were hearing footsteps yeah, above head at the same time. At the same time in two totally different locations this is cool. in the prison. This is and now really they're having cool. the same kind of interaction. Same with thing. The both using it as a communication device at the same time. You're the one that touched my hand a little bit ago. <laughs> Something just touched my hand. Okay, really. If you're such a badass. 
Northeastern Spirit Society. Talk to you later. Oh my God. Rusty Lasseter was in this cell. He ran out and killed Red in this very last cell. If you're such a badass, come out here, show us. It's time to end Paranormal Challenge West Virginia Penitentiary. Let's hurry. Now that both investigations are officially completed, teams must lock up all of their materials and evacuate the premises until morning. The teams return the next morning to review their evidence. They'll present the four most compelling pieces captured during the competition. Oh my God, you guys gotta come over here. Two audio and two visual. And to help both teams, Zach has brought in tech expert Billy Tolly. Yeah, we were all watching this. It's judgment time. This is all about pride, respect, credibility. We're very competitive at what we do. We like to have fun, but we want to win. I think our team did an excellent job. We worked well together, and it was just such a great time. Let's bring the teams in. Northeastern Spirit Society, Copperhead, Mandy, Daniel, how are you? Good. And I want to introduce you to the judges. This is Joshua Warren. This is Alexandra Holzer. And as always, my chief judge, Dave Schrader. And now let's get to what we're all waiting for because you guys were getting some awesome results with that millimeter. Let's get to evidence. What's your first piece? We were in New Wall on the left side. You here, come in. Wow. Is this enhanced, Billy? Yeah. Okay. Play it again. Are you here. with us? Come in. Here, yes. can you see me? There's a few in there because they all like you. But I can't tell if the voice beforehand is them communicating us or getting ready to I go think into something. Talking. Copperhead, do you have a second clip? Yes, we do. Set it up, please. We're on the right side of uh, New, New Wall. Okay. And. We were doing a little bit of provoking, and I just called them punks. Okay. What we think it says, it says, but they're not. Please play. I don't know. I, I, heard I can I heard make you. out what appears to be saying, but they're not. I heard you. All right, let's move on to visual evidence. The first one, we're on tier three, right side of North Hall. Manny's standing in front of his cell, and you can see an orb shoot past her, and then she gets touched on the back of the neck. Billy, please bring that up and play it for us. I just felt something brush my back. Wow. Mm -hmm. Play that again. say something happened she had a, there was something going on there if there is some type of field that's moving through there and it's carrying a bit of debris with it we may have seen evidence of that just before you sensed it physically do you have a second piece of visual evidence yes we do what is it we were on new wall okay. running the thermal and i was doing a sweep up the tiers we remember that and on i'm the coming thermal. up with the thermal and it looked like there's a figure from about here up, and it almost looks like it turns and looks at us like it turned around to look at us. That's what it looks like to me. Please point to the screen where you're seeing this figure. Okay. We can say it's something that appears to have the shape of a figure, but do we really know? Any other feedback, judges? Seems that when the figure may tend to turn that is probably just an illusion caused by pixelation and refocusing because you're moving the camera yeah. so there's just no way we can ever 
draw any definitive conclusions from that. Northeastern Spirit Society, thank you very much for presenting us with some very interesting evidence. The winner of Paranormal Challenge, West Virginia Penitentiary, is... Northeastern Spirit Society has delivered their evidence to the judges. I just felt something brush my back. Now it's West Virginia Paranormal's turn to show their evidence. Jordan, something was really attracted to you last night. Every time you went in that cell, that millimeter was just going nuts. And then the guys went in there, you guys weren't getting any action. No action from the spirits here. They like Jordan better. I wonder why. So let's start off right away. West Virginia Paranormal, let's get to evidence. Set up the first piece. First piece, uh, we were over in uh, North Hall. I was provoking pretty heavily at this point. I said, screw you at one point. A little bit later, it says, get out, prick. You hear it again? Wow. I can hear a, a horse out, you prick. Yeah. I'm not exactly sure what I'm hearing, but I can hear something. Do you have a second piece of audio evidence? Yes, we do. What is it, John? We are also in the same area down at the end in the four cells. A little bit earlier, I asked, why are you so pissed? And it says, because everybody in here is so angry. Play. Nice. I'm not impressed, I'm afraid. I don't think that we could take 10 people off the street who have no idea what this is supposed to say and play it for them, and they're going to get that out of it. And I could make it out the first time, and that's why you have a panel of four of us up here is because we're not always going to see eye to eye. <laughs> <laughs> Did you capture any visual evidence? Yes, we have two pieces. First clip, we are over in uh, New Wall cell block. We heard some footsteps over by the uh, stairwell. I came around to a corner, and you can see a mist come up and go to the left. Are you locked away in here? Are you scared to come out? Where is this going to happen at? Right down here in the bottom right. We're the new wardens in this prison. You answer to us. You have rewinds? We're the new wardens in this prison. You answer to us. We're the new wardens in this prison. You answer to us. We're the new wardens in this prison. You answer to us. Judges. It is light and it's diffuse, but I'm not sure what it is. It is interesting. Do you have a second piece of visual evidence? Yes, we do. What is it, John? This is when we were down um, in North Hall where we got the EVPs. This is when we were sending Jordan in and out of the cell, getting the, uh, the mail meter to react. You already said that you're back again? Yeah. Especially when we had her take her jacket off. It really went crazy. You want me to sit by you again? You want me to sit on your bed again? Yeah. Just thinking we had her take her jacket off. What's truly unique is it only reacted to your presence. Yeah. And these two guys that are not as attractive as you <laughs> went into the cell. It didn't do anything. Guys, you may be released at this time. We'll call you back shortly after we've reached our decision. Thank you. Thank you. Let's nail out the first three categories because I think it's going to get real finicky when we get to the evidence because we saw things differently and I want to hear why you made those certain assumptions about the evidence. Northeastern Spirit Society, I felt that they did not really do that great on history and I'm kind of sitting on the fence with them. Which team got called the killer the victim and called the victim the killer? That was West Virginia. Yeah. It was West Virginia. Unfortunately for a challenge like this, you have to be spot on. Both of their uses in technology, to me, was working with that millimeter. I witnessed two events last night that blew me away. I can't pick one. West Virginia was able to take one piece of equipment and alternate individuals back and forth to determine that that piece of equipment was demonstrating some interaction between those people and the environment. Well, I felt that Northeastern Spirit Society um, used the millimeter brilliantly because they applied um, more verbal usage to finding out information. They used it as a communication tool. Yeah, right. they really did. O M O. Yeah. Now, West Virginia Paranormal didn't take it up that notch, no, they as didn't. you stated to them. Just to let you guys know, through four categories, we're two and two. 
This is all going to come down <laughs> to visual evidence. Looking at the first piece, Zach, that they brought us from Northeastern. I just felt something brush my back. I'm so over orbs. And to me, what we saw was a bug. Correct. It looked very similar to those kind of fluttering movements. But all she of... felt it. She felt That's something. the only reason why you'd have any substance is because there was, there was a little historical thing happening there. Right. Where are we agreement on the missed video? We're the new wardens in this prison. You ain't to the us. Was it I'm, missed? Did you see something there? Do you believe that the there mist, was something I'm, caught? No, I'm not. I'm, I'm more with the orbs. I think there may have been something there. I'm taking it with Joshua on this one. You have to make this decision with what we were supplied with very, very selectively and carefully because this is the determining vote right here. I liked that they were able to substantiate the millimeter with the long, sustained video. It was so interactive with Jordan. Right. Um, so I, I did like that. Although that thermal image, and that does look very much like a, a, a torso and head of somebody up there. Dave and I did take a walk around uh, to try and look at that exact location to see if we could find anything that could have created the illusion of a figure standing there, and our findings were inconclusive. Yeah. Addressing all five categories, judges, we have found a winner for Paranormal Challenge West Virginia Penitentiary. The evidence review went great. I feel like we, we showed what we had, what we needed to do. I think we got this locked up. I think that our evidence was really, really hard to disprove. I think we got a lot of really good stuff. Northeastern Spirit Society, West Virginia Paranormal, on behalf of the judges and myself, we just want to first off say thank you guys very much for coming out here and showing us some awesome investigations. And before I announce the winner of Paranormal Challenge West Virginia Penitentiary, Dave, is there anything else that you'd like to tell the teams? For the team that won, you deserve it. For the other team, know that it was a very, very close call. The winner of Paranormal Challenge West Virginia Penitentiary is... Northeastern Spirit Society. Congratulations. Congratulations, Mandy. When we won, I, I was just, I was absolutely stoked. I mean, this is bragging rights for me in more ways than one. We gave it 150%, and you can only learn and grow from it, so. There it is, another winner announced on Paranormal Challenge, right there, taking home the bragging rights. So what do you say? Do you want to come out and compete?